Bennett bucked Republicans rots. Tea Party candidates just shooting Utah Senator Bob Bennett from the party's GOP primary. Good news for my next guest. Well, he's the Tea Party guy running for Senate in Kentucky, which holds its big primary next week. Right now, he's leading the establishment candidate, Trey Grayson, in the polls. By the way, Mr. Grayson will be with us tomorrow, part of our Fair and Balanced campaign. Here with us now, Dr. Rand Paul, the Republican congressman. Uh, Ron Paul, Rand, good to have you. Good to be with you, Neil. Um, what do you make of what happened in Utah? You take a, a senator like Bennett, very conservative by and large, maybe not on the issues that Tea Party has cared about, like supporting TARP and that sort of thing, but that did him in. Um, is he getting to be a litmus test, and could it hurt the, the whole Tea Party movement if they divide and conquer conservatives who you would think are closer to their line of thinking? I've been saying for months that there's a Tea Party tidal wave coming and it's going to sweep a lot of incumbents from office. I'd say it got to Utah before it got to Kentucky, but it's coming to Kentucky too. It is about the issues. It's about the bank bailout. We as Republicans don't believe in bailing out failed businesses, much less having the government own these businesses. There was nothing in the bank bailout that's consistent with the Republican platform, and the people who voted for it need to know that. In my state, 90 percent of Republican primary voters were opposed to the bailout. It's inconsistent with the Republican philosophy, and the Tea Party's coming. We're about that. We're about doing something about the debt, getting rid of pork barrel spending, right. and we're also about reform, reforming Congress, make them read the bills for goodness sakes. But it, let's say in so doing, um, past the Republican primary or whatever, now you're in a general election, and, and, and you look at, at, at uh, Charlie Crist in Florida, leaves the Republican Party to run as a third party candidate, and the guy he trailed by 30 points, Marco Rubio, he now leads by six points. And so Tea Parties who actively supported Marco Rubio might end up getting their win regardless. It's still very early. But you see my point that, that, that it might be a divide and conquer kind of a strategy that benefits liberals. Well, I don't see that. I see that the issues that the Tea Party represents, things like term limits, a balanced budget amendment, read the bills, point out where the bills are or have constitutional authority, an enumerated powers act. Things like this are popular across party lines. You know, you look at term limits, you poll term limits, 70 to 80 percent of Republicans or Democrats are for it. The Tea Party also says that we want Congress to vote on bills and make those bills applicable to themselves. It is arrogant, and people see this arrogance that Washington will pass bills and then Congress will exempt themselves from those very bills. That's what the Tea Party is about, and it's a bipartisan chastisement to say, look, Washington, you've done a crummy job with the deficit, and we're worried. We're worried that the deficit will consume our nation. Can that Tea Party rage or populist uh, sentiment last until November? I mean, the fear that I've heard expressed by some Tea Party members is that among some of their members it won't, and, and that this power um, and, and influence that has clearly grown, and I've covered them over this last year and a half, um, will dissipate, and they won't be the force they think they are. I think November is the culmination of this. Everybody's looking for an election where they can do something and participate. But all across Kentucky, the biggest rallies I've been to have not been Republican rallies. They've been Tea Party rallies. We had three or 4,000 people gather in Louisville for a Tea Party. We've had over 1,000 in Lexington, over 1,000 in Paducah, big crowds. And uh, the Tea Party momentum is what I give credit for, for myself. We have uh, run an election where I've never run for office before, never held office, and yet the hand-picked establishment candidate is now trailing us by over 10 points. Well, you're, you're hardly an unknown name. <laughs> well, it's helped a lot because okay. we've uh, raised a lot of money, and I'm also in all of my ads, and I'm also in all my opponent's ads because he's been attacking me for three months. Right. So now my name recognition is probably higher than anybody in the race. All right, Rand Paul, thank you very much. Thank you, Neil.